Ibrahim. So uh, this is a case of six-year-old boy who presented with epistaxis and uh, nasal obstruction. As you can see here that uh, this is the axial CT scan and uh, this is showing the opacification, complete op opacification of the left maxillary sinus and uh, a lobular mass uh, which is extending into the nasal cavity and nasopharynx. Okay, so this is that lobular mass which is uh, extending into the this is the nose no, which is extending into the nasal cavity and nasopharynx. This is that lobular mass, and it is also causing widening of the sinus ostium. There is widening of the ostium here, but no bone destruction is evident. So this is a case of entroconal polyp. This is the diagnosis: entroconal polyp, and uh, in the differentials, we can include inverting papilloma, uh, mucosal, allergic fungal sinusitis, and uh, sinonasal neoplasms. Next is a 58-year-old woman presented with left ear fullness and uh, conductive hearing loss. So these are the images that are provided here. As you can see that uh, here there is abnormal soft tissue in the prusac space here in the prusac space and here in the epitempanum this is the epitempanum and this is the prusac space and this is abnormal soft tissue noted here also in these images you can see that there is a erosion of the scutum or blunting of the scutum here this is the blunting of the or erosion of the scutum also there is a erosion of the body and short process of the incus. Okay, this is the body and short process of the incus. So there is erosion of these structures as well, body and incus, along with erosion of the scutum. The tympanic membrane here, it is the this is the tympanic membrane. So the tympanic membrane here is thickened and retracted and uh, the ossicles are displaced medially. So the tympanic membrane is thickened and retracted and the ossicles are displaced medially. So this is a case of cholecystoma, acquired pars flaccida type cholecystoma. And uh, in the differentials, you can add chronic otitis media with the bone erosion. Next is a case of 84 year old man who presented with the altered mental status. And uh, these are the images provided. So as you can see that uh, on the CT scan bone window, there's uh, a large zone here. You can see that there is a large zone of abnormal mixed increased density uh, in the frontal bone. So this is the abnormal area of mixed density in the frontal bone and it has a sharp very sharp geographic zone of transition so it has a sharp geographic zone of transition and uh, this mixed that is osteolytic and uh, osteoblastic uh, process is uh, producing a cotton wool appearance it looks like a cotton wool you know it's a cotton wool appearance so uh, this is the mixed osteolytic and osteoblastic process which is producing the cotton wool appearance and uh, in further images, we see that uh, on T1 weighted MRI, there is abnormal hypo intense signal in the uh, marrow space. Here, there is abnormal hypo intense signal here in the marrow space, and uh, also on the T2 weighted MRI, the signal is heterogeneous. So, this is a case of Paget's disease, and uh, in the differentials, you can add fibrous dysplasia, metastasis multiple myeloma and hyperparathyroidism. Next is a three-year-old child who presented with the bilateral hearing loss. And uh, you can see here that uh, here, these are the images provided. This is the vestibular aqueduct, which is enlarged here. The vestibular aqueduct appears enlarged. And uh, here, this is the cochlea and uh, it is quite abnormal shape. It has a bulbous appearance to the apical turn. It has a bulbous appearance to the apical turn 
which is fused with the middle turn so this cochlea is abnormal shaped and uh, it is fused uh, the apical turn is fused with the middle turn and also the modulus is deficient the however the semicircular canals here as you can see the semicircular canals are normal in appearance uh, but the vestibule is mildly dilated so this is a case of uh, incomplete partition uh, type 2 that is classic mondini malformation and uh, in the differentials you can add enlarged vestibular aqueduct syndrome and incomplete partition type 1 so next is the case of a previously healthy man status post trauma uh, presenting with swelling pain and marked decrease in visual equity so these are the images that are provided so as you can see that uh, on the ct scan uh, there is this uh, periorbital swelling here on the right side this is a periorbital swelling along with some uh, contour deformity of the right globe so this is the periorbital swelling along with some contour deformity also you can see that there is high attenuation material here in the right globe within the right globe there is this high attenuation material so this uh, is likely due to hemorrhage intraocular hemorrhage and uh, also there is this periorbital swelling here so this is a case of uh, globe rupture ocular globe rupture and uh, in the differentials you can add uh, non traumatic vitreous hemorrhage and ocular tumors like melanoma because and retinoblastoma so this is a case of uh, uh, basically this is a case of ocular globe rupture next is 12 year old patient presenting with the redness around the right eye pain and blurred vision so these are the images provided so as you can see that on this uh, ct scan this is the axial and this is the coronal view so you can see that there is here there is a small rim enhancing collection this is a small ring enhancing collection which is containing a small bubble of gas as well in the extraconal space and this is the medial rectus muscle and this collection is medial to this medial rectus muscle this collection is medial to this medial rectus muscle and it is adjacent to the lamina papacea okay this is the lamina papacea so this is adjacent to it and medial to the medial rectus muscle also you can see that here the ethmoid sinus is opacified the ethmoid sinus is opacified also the frontal sinus is opacified here the frontal sinus is opacified the ethmoid sinus is opacified and uh, on the mri sequences we can see that uh, there is hyper intense material it shows the on the axial t2 weighted mri shows the the hyper intense material within this uh, rim enhancing collection uh, which is consistent with fluid also we can see that there is uh, proptosis there is proptosis and extensive here the periorbital and right facial swelling there you can see there is this periorbital swelling right facial swelling and enhancement is also noted here in the post contrast sequence there is enhancement of this region so this is a case of subperiosteal orbital abscess and uh, in the differentials you can add orbital hematoma orbital abscesses other orbital abscesses and congenital <clears throat> lesions like uh, dermoid cyst or lymphatic malformation so next case 14 year old girl presenting uh, with headaches and uh, these are the provided images now you can see that uh, on the t1 weighted mri uh, here and this is the t2 weighted fat suppressed mri axial sequences so there is abnormal here you can see that this is this is the abnormal area which is hypo intense on t1 this is hypo intense on t1 and also it is hypo intense on t2 as well fat suppressed mri sequence it is hypo intense on t2 hypo intense on t1 and uh, on the two weighted images we can see here that this area of signal decrease is largely homogeneous there is no heterogeneously hyperintense it is homogeneously hyperintense 
and this process is involving uh, the uh, left pterygoid plates as well and the basi sphenoid as you can see that uh, the left uh, here you can see that the left sphenoid sinus is not aerated here and uh, here in the other images of the uh, CT scan you can see that there is this uh, ground glass density in this region this uh, geographic area of ground glass density in this area which is corresponding to the abnormality on MRI this is the ground glass appearing lesion so this is a case of fibrous dysplasia and uh, obviously in the differentials you can put Paget's disease osteoma ossifying fibroma, metastasis, myeloma, and chordoma. Next is a 69-year-old woman uh, presenting with the palpable mass in her left neck. And uh, these are the images. So these are the axial images from a CT angiogram. And they show an intensely, this is the intensely enhancing mass at the carotid bifurcation. Okay, this is the carotid bifurcation and there's intensely enhancing mass here. And this mass is actually, it is causing the splaying of the internal and external carotid arteries. Okay, this is the internal and external carotid arteries and this mass is between them and it is causing splaying of these internal and external carotid arteries. So, even in this uh, early arterial phase, there is marked enhancement of the mass. So, in this image, you can very easily see that this is basically causing this mass is causing the splaying of the ICA and ECA and is giving liar sign and this liar sign is quite characteristic for carotid body paraganglioma so this is a case of carotid body paraganglioma and in the differentials you can add schwannoma glomus vigale uh, lymphadenopathy and aneurysm next is uh, eight months old girl presenting with right neck mass and uh, these are the images so as you can see that there is a large multi-septated mass in the right neck here. This is the large multi-septated mass in the right neck. And uh, on the one weighted imaging, uh, we can see that this, uh, the signal intensity within this lesion is actually, it is slightly brighter uh, uh, than simple fluid. Uh, it is slightly brighter than simple. This is the T1 weighted image and uh, the signal intensity is actually here. It is slightly brighter than simple fluid. This is a T2 weighted MRI and uh, as you can see that it is quite hyper intense on T2. It is very hyper intense on T2 and uh, here this is a post contrast sequence and we can see there's very little post contrast enhancement here. Again, this is T2-weighted MRI and you can see that there is uh, this hyper-intense mass in the right side of the neck. So, this mass is involving multiple spaces in the neck and it is enveloping the neck structures uh, such as the sternocleidomastoid muscle here. This is the sternocleidomastoid muscle and uh, this mass is enveloping the neck spaces and it is involving uh, all the different multiple spaces and it is enveloping the neck structures. So this is a case of lymphangioma and uh, in the differentials you can add branchial cleft cyst, thyroglossal duct cyst, cystic metastasis or abscess. Next is 49 year old woman uh, presenting with anterior neck mass and these are the images. Now, as you can see that there is a well-defined low attenuation anterior neck mass, which is uh, deep to the strap muscles. These are the strap muscles, deep to the strap muscles, and it is uh, abutting uh, both the hyoid and the left thyroid lamina. This is abutting the hyoid left thyroid lamina. And also there is a small focus of uh, a higher attenuation material here along the right side of the lesion and this represents the uh, ectopic thyroid tissue, okay, here. Tiny focus of higher attenuation material along the right side of the lesion here. And this is the ectopic thyroid tissue. So this is a case of thyroglossal duct cyst. This is a case of thyroglossal duct cyst. And in the differentials, you can add metastatic cancer in the lymph node, uh, that is papillary thyroid cancer and abscess. Next is 34-year-old woman presenting uh, with blurred vision. And uh, these are the images. 
Now you can see that these are the axial and these are the coronal uh, CT images and they show the enlargement here. They show the enlargement of the rectus muscles here. In the coronal, uh, coronal sequence, it's quite evident there's enlargement of the inferior, of the medial and of the superior rectus muscles in both orbits, okay, in both orbits. And uh, however, this lateral mu um, rectus muscle and the oblique muscle, they appear relatively spare. There is sparing of this lateral rectus. Lateral rectus is of normal size. However, these three muscles are quite enlarged. On the axial scans, you can see that the enlargement of the muscles, it tends to uh, involve the muscle bellies only. However, the tendons here are spared. There is sparing of the tendons. So, it resembles a coke bottle appearance. This is coke bottle configuration of enlargement of the muscle belly, however, sparing of the tendon. So, also you can see that there is mild proptosis as well. So, this is a case of uh, thyroid, dysthyroid ophthalmopathy, dysthyroid ophthalmopathy, and uh, in the differentials, you can add uh, orbital pseudotumor, that is, idiopathic inflammatory orbital disease or any tumors like lymphoma or metastasis or infectious myositis and other inflammatory disorders like sarcoidosis or Wegener's granulomatosis. Next is a case of 46-year-old woman uh, who is presenting with uh, headaches and uh, these are the provided images. Now you can see that there is a very well-defined intraconal mass in the right orbit which is between the uh, medial rectus and the optic nerve. This is the optic nerve and this is the medial rectus and this mass is between these two structures and it is displacing uh, the optic nerve laterally. Yeah, it is displacing the optic nerve laterally but the nerve does not appear to be primarily involved here. Okay, so the nerve is not involved. However, it is displaced by this mass. So this mass has uh, uh, increased signal uh, relative to the muscles on the T2-weighted MRI. This is T2-weighted MRI, so it has relatively, this mass is relatively increased signal compared to the muscles. This is the axial T2-weighted MRI and this is the coronal stair, ima stair image. So, this lesion is uh, here, you can see that it is iso-intense on uh, T1-weighted images and on the post-contrast sequence, it is enhancing uh, homogeneously. So, there is homogeneous enhancement of this mass after the IV contrast administration in this sequence. So, there is homogeneous enhancement. On the, the on here, here on the axial T2 weight MRI sequence, we can see that there is a pseudo capsule. This is the pseudo capsule uh, which is visible around the anterior half of the lesion. Okay, this is this black line is actually the pseudo capsule which is visible around the anterior half of the lesion and this appearance of the pseudo capsule it is actually due to the chemical shift artifact and that's why it is not visible on the stair this capsule is not visible on the stair or fat suppressed sequence so this is the capsule and it is visible due to the chemical shift artifact so these uh, um, imaging descriptions are quite typical for uh, orbit hemangioma so, this is the case of uh, orbital hemangioma and in the differentials, you can put schwannoma, meningioma, lymphoma, metastasis and venous varix. So, this is uh, another patient who came with hearing loss uh, after cochlear implantation. So, these are the provided images. So, now as you can see that uh, here there has been prior placement of a cochlear implant and now there is abnormal ossification uh, which is obliterating uh, the semicircular canals and the majority of the cochlea here. This is the abnormal ossification which is obliterating the semicircular canals and majority of the cochlea. So, this is a case of uh, labyrinthitis ossificans and in the differentials, uh, you can add cochlear hyperplasia or cochlear aplasia uh, because we don't see any cochlea here because it is being obliterated by the abnormal ossification. So, this is a case of labyrinthitis ossificans.